Welcome back to the report call. Surprise, motherfucker. Dolo and Mingo. Yo, that's my man. Yeah, man. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Get your popcorn ready. Because I'm going to burn this motherfucker down. Take that, take that, take that. Take it to the stage. Yo, what's up, people? What's up? What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the report card. I'm your host, Dane Diddy, and your co-host, Solo Yomingo. Yeah, man, we got five albums for y'all today. We got Tish Hyman dedicated to. Yep. We got Lauren Hill, the Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Yes, we sir. got Lil Kim Hardcore. Yep. We got TLC Crazy Sexy Cool. Yep. And we got Nicki Minaj Pink Friday. Not in that order. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but before you, before we get into that, how you doing, Mingo? Man, same old, same old, man. Just trying you to. You about get to make a trip, it. man? We recording this on Wednesday. Man, yeah, man. By the time y'all hearing this, it's gonna be Sunday. Right, right, man. This is crazy, man. The runarounds, trying to get this rental, trying to get things right. Nino, you better appreciate me going out of my way to make sure I attend your event. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can't you can't question my brotherhood, man. Yeah, man. Seriously. Yeah. That, that's, that's, a, that's a long ass ride, that's man. That's 800 plus miles, bro. <laughs> <laughs> word, word, word. Yeah, man. But, uh, you know, just, just to comment on a couple things that happened so far this week, yo. Congratulations to the uh women's gymnastic olympic team that's dope you know right they out there killing it man right. uh, they all gold everything uh, you know simone, uh, simone biles is killing it out there got them italian chicks mad uh, talking about some next year they paint their skin brown or black so they can win uh you know they got uh i don't know what her real name is but they calling her baby shakira she like the first latino gold medalist in gymnastics okay you know Shout out to her. Word. She out there killing it. Gabby Douglas. Word. Shout out to Gabby. Yeah. You know, she got some flack because she ain't put her hand on her heart when she did the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know, hey, this might offend a lot of people, but when I was in school, I never put my hand on my heart during the Pledge of Allegiance. And I, mean, I, I don't plan on telling my kids to do it either. I mean, everybody does it different. Some people put their head down. Some people bow. Some people look up. Some people stare at the flag. Some people put their hand on their hearts. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, come on, man. Yeah, seriously, man. And, uh, you know, you, you just brought it up, too. You know, Malaya got caught. Hitting the, you yeah, know, hitting, hitting the, the joint, hitting the split. Well, you know what I'm saying we, we don't know if it is, but we seen a picture. If it is, man, so what? That's that's weed, man. Everybody smoke weed. That's the healing healing of the nation. Now, who can argue? With that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, if, if you listen to Doctor, uh, you know, Sebi, he tell you, you, you know, you would actually know right. about the good properties of weed. Right. You know, uh, other than that, I mean, there's a couple of new songs out. I mean, like I said, it's only Wednesday. You know. Uh, the Get Down soundtrack. Some of them songs kind of came out. Uh, some of them sound pretty good. Uh, they got Jaden Smith on the joint. Okay. I ain't listened to it, but right. I saw they had him on the joint. Uh, Party Next Door and 50 Cent said they got a song coming. Okay. 50 I also think, squashed his beef with yeah, Cameron. Yeah, with Cam, I seen that. Yeah, so, you know, clap it up for that. Well, You know, it, all, it, it, it old seems school like, beef getting squashed. Yeah, it seems like 50's up to something because he's getting his DJ Khaled on. Like, he's getting his tour. You know, he's going around touring and meeting people, squashing beefs, and he's up to something, man. I, I will watch that band. Like, he, <laughs> he's a slick He might. He might be lining it up, man. Hey. Trying to trying to get stuff ready. Right. Might be working on a new album or something. Yeah, Rich man. Die trying to. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. That's not. Don't name it that. Fifth. Don't, don't name do it that. that, man. Don't no. name it that. <laughs> Pineapples. <laughs> yeah, but man, you know, let's go ahead and start off this joint, man. Tish Hyman, dedicated to. Real name is Letitia Hyman. She was born and raised in the Bronx. She got into music BX, at a very man. young age, man. Yeah, shout out to the BX, Word. man. Bronx, New York. Shout out to the BX. You know, she got into rapping as, as a battle rapper. Right. You know what I'm saying? In, in the Bronx. And uh, she traveled back and forth from Mount Vernon and back to the Bronx so she could actually record at the studio on Mount Vernon. She got kicked out of her house when she was 15. She said she was like the worst kind of kid that anybody. She was like a parent's worst nightmare. Man. She said all she wanted to do was smoke weed and and do music right i mean man i mean her heart was in it though like you know yeah but it, it's tough man especially that's one of the reasons why we moved out you know what i'm saying i love the i love uh home you know but to raise a family is is hard in new york it's tough man you got so many obstacles and then it's, the city's so fast you know what i'm saying so much things going on and 
And it's not even what you do at home. Like Jada said, same thing. My mom did a great job with me. You know, the streets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it just be like that, man. Yeah. When she uh when she turned 18, she made friends with a woman named Hope Adams. Mm-hmm. And uh she thought she was so talented that uh she actually told Tish, like, cause Tish told her, like, yo, I'm about to move to the projects. And she was like, No, you ain't. You about to move in with me. Right. And she moved there into a place in Manhattan and she moved out. Let Tish stay there for like two years. Crazy. Not paying no rent, no nothing. She Crazy. said she was across from Def Jam Studio. So she was seeing meeting Jay. That, that's you know, up, all though. of them dudes. Yeah. That's you know, she one of those people that good stuff happened to we, all the we time. Need, we need more thing more situations like that, actually, because man, people got it even at it in our situation where we do nine to five. There's people staying right around that campus for free. Yeah. And getting a sixty, seventy thousand salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But we, yeah, hold on, let me get through this yeah, though, yeah, man. She, you know, she got, uh, you know, she she got it. Um, her homegirl, Hope Adams, got her into selling mortgages, and she she said she was killing it. She made like a quarter of a mil in like a year or two, and then the mortgage, you know, it went downhill in two thousand seven. You know, the the whole crash. Right. Then she, you know, she started working uh back in the music. She got back into songwriting. She got in the gym, lost some weight. She moved to Los Angeles, and uh, she wrote a song for an artist named Ash and Watts. Which helped her get her uh, publishing, which helped her get signed to Interscope, and also got her publishing deal with Universal Music. Right, and then she started landing writing credits. You know, she worked with Alicia Keys, she worked with Diddy, she worked with Kanye West, Kelly Rollins, you know, a lot of other people too. You know, Ty Dolla Sign. You know, dedicated to is Tish Hammond's first EP, even though she's been doing music forever. How you feel about this, man? This joint is so dope, bro. This joint is fire, like. Like I didn't know she started out as a battle rapper, but that definitely it, you could definitely see it because she is raw. Like she has, she has flow, she has style, she has bars. Like, right. and it's like, and it's, it's it's rare you get this from a female. Like she's like the closest talent that we can compare to uh, Lauren Hill. I want to say, you know what I'm saying? But she's a little more raw like lauren was just more uh you know on a conscience tip and uh yeah she said her her biggest hobby is is uh getting high and fucking these bitches (laughs) (laughs) so you know what i'm saying but she's talented (laughs) as fuck though yeah you know what i'm saying like uh she only had i mean it's a it's like a sample it's only like what seven track seven track ep yeah so you know uh the production was dope she killed it the production was also it was dope and diverse because you had your your r&b songs you had your upbeat songs you had your rap songs so you know and whenever you could kudos to drake for doing it whenever you could uh you know sing your hook and then rap your verse that's always uh you know a pat in the back to you to you as an artist you um, know you remember lauren was doing that too though yeah yeah and, oh, and missy yeah, yeah definitely yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna get to that you know we got lauren on the lineup yeah 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 <laughs> so, but um yeah i gave this an a minus a 92 um her only two uh um features was good good features on the same song was ty dollar sign and fab they both did their thing um both of them your peoples too <laughs> right both of them my people i must with both of them and um yeah what you thought about it i gave it a 92 a oh. minus <laughs> right, right on the money too that's crazy yeah you know i, I feel like yo if you can't feel this like this right. like you ain't got a soul or something man like you might not even really be into music like that you right, know what me, i'm let, saying let me get let me get to him a little a little more listen this is why we are having such a hard time letting certain artists go with their lack of rhymes and bars and shit like that because then you see a female come and smash it yeah like smash it to the point where i i mean not- but hold on man hold on man it, it almost sounds like you're being a little sexist though why you said <laughs> no not like you made that. it seem like a female rapper can't rap like that i was about to make my point i'm not big on a female rapper so when I'm digging it so much, you know what I'm saying? And I know I'm not big on a female rapper, it lets me know that this is hard. Like, this is good work. You know what I'm but, saying? But your boy Lil Yachty said, all these old ass niggas need to just stop complaining and just get over it. You ain't got to spit a cold 16 no more to be dope. Don't ever play yourself. It, man, I don't know where we're going to find the silver <laughs> line and <into> shit <laughs> at, man, but... I don't know, man. I, I ain't old, so I know he ain't talking to me, man. <laughs> no, she, she said def, define old, and he's like, old is old. It's just like, man, you sound like a dumb dude. And, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, like, yo, she, 
like 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 Juan, like Mingo said, she is the closest thing to Lauren Hill. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like with the ability to sing, she sounds nothing like Lauren Hill. Right. It, they're two two completely different artists. Right. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like the songwriting ability here is ridiculous. The the distinctness in her voice. She's got like a raspiness to her voice. Right. You know uh, that all that I can do like you can't do nothing but relate to that you know what i'm saying because it's like subway you see art. people yo that's subway Ooh, art because it's so real too me being from, yo, the, from the city man yo, you already I, know I, bro I, when you i heard that song that. and it it just made me go back to right. them bus to, to them subway rides where you just right. see all these bums and, homeless and it's just people, like homeless people that you or, don't know what the and i would always sit there right, and think like, like yo what, how did they get right, to this position exactly bro and then you'd be like man he talented like what happened along the way like Know what I'm saying? Like, it's either uh, 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 somebody something, that painted some little something. little mistake, son. Right. But it be people that, you know, artists that paint, uh, artists that do uh, jazz, play the flute. Man, we even got the, you already know, it's show times, ladies and gentlemen, and the dudes start doing they flip. We even got, like, gymnasts on the train in New York. So it's like, definitely yeah. subway art, man. But, but I think what she was trying to say, though, is because, like, they're in the subway like subway art is there it never goes away and like there's always some homeless people down in right. the subway like so they're art to the subway right. like they're part of the subway right. and you have, a, have you have to have an open mind to see that because some people you know like you, when, you even just when gotta I was be young. cold and just block it out right when i was young i was like mm, man like you know you don't really you like overlook it but as you get older, you realize I'm saying that anybody can end up in a bad situation. You just make if you make a certain mistake, you just got to be hopeful not to make the same mistakes over and over again. I'm saying. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, that home for Christmas joint, that joint hit me hard because oh yeah. that's exactly why I don't like going home for the holidays. Like, you know, everybody that want to know why I don't like coming to V8, just listen to home for Christmas. Yeah, man. I'm, you I'm, know, I'm about to be broke probably this weekend because I'm going to go home and I can't just pull up on the block and not nah yeah. bottle for the homies. What's up? <laughs> what we doing? What's going on? Like, so yeah, so I might come back. You know what I'm saying a little hurt, but it is what it is. Yeah, the four letter words join is crazy. Yep. Just her talking about all the things that matter to her love life, all of that beautiful stuff. Absolutely in dream. Both of them joints matter. How your car rocking? Right. The beat she picked for them joints is right. crazy. And let's be honest, you know, I mean, like I said, if you can't feel that. I don't really know what to tell you. Yeah. You know, she picked some really good beats. Right. Like, you know, like Mingo said, it's only three features, only seven songs. I'm eagerly awaiting a, a, a full album. I didn't give it 100 just because I didn't like a little bit of the hook on Dream. It's like a little pre-hook, but it's only seven songs, so it's not much to deduct from. Right. So that kind of hurt it a little bit, but I think it's so amazing. I had to give it an amazing grade. Yeah, definitely. We're definitely looking for more work from her, an entire project, and we will hope that people will collab with her because I don't see why nah, she's nah, not she said, she said she's uh, her, her and Ty got like a whole bunch of songs oh, coming. okay that's dope you know like I told you she wrote The Horses in the Stable and that's Ooh, like my favorite joint yeah, on that we, album we, we, we was going crazy over that yeah. song uh, that, that week when we was reviewing it yeah she wrote it <laughs> crazy <laughs> yeah man check Tish Hyman out man Word. shout out to 1080p for putting me on to this man Word. alright Pink Friday Nicki Minaj Onika Tanya Mirage. She was born in St. James in Trinidad and Tobago, but she was actually raised in Southside, Jamaica, Queens, New York. Island girl. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, she actually grew up with her grandma, and then uh, after her, uh, you know, her dad apparently tried to set the house on fire man. and kill her mom. So Crazy. her mom moved to the United States, and once she got settled, she basically sent for Nikki. And uh, she, well, Onika, Nikki, whatever you right. want to call her, you know, she got sent up to New York. She moved to New York. You know, she wrote her first round when she was 12 years old. You know, she got into visual performing arts when she uh, she had a successful audition at LaGuardia High School in Manhattan. The thing is, is she actually wanted to try for the music program, but she lost her voice right before the auditions. Man. So she tried out for the drama section and she actually got in for that, you know. And uh, she wanted to become an actress for a short period of time. She got in uh, off-Broadway. She was in an off-Broadway play called In Case You Forget in 2001. And then she started out with a group called the Hood Stars, which is actually they were signed to full force, you know. Okay, uh, yeah, Dude and from uh, the house party. Yeah, <laughs> basically. And uh, you know, she even did the theme music for uh, WWE women's wrestler named Victoria. You know, that's how she met uh, 
um skill how do you say his name safari safari they, he was in a group with her oh, and okay. it was like two other people it was uh Bole- bow-legged Lou's son safari Nicki minaj and another dude okay and uh she was part of that group and um uh, you know she ended up meeting fendi from dirty money entertainment and he signed her in 2007 and changed her name from Nicki mirage which is her real last name to Nicki minaj she didn't like the idea apparently she still doesn't like the idea right. she plays off of it now but you know he was like yeah it's a play on sexuality but you be eating these bitches so right. and then she she kind of you know you know fed off of it and ran you know, with it yeah. yeah and then uh after she started you know fendi got her on a come up dvds and little wayne saw one of the come up dvds she was on so he basically went grabbed her mentored her for right. you know her mixtapes and uh around Tom Scotty Beam Me Up came out she was on tour with him he actually signed her officially to Young right, Money right. in 2009 and Pink Friday is her first official studio album how you feel about Pink Friday man um it's definitely Nikki's best work um Nikki I, I could say I could definitely see the uh the influence and uh you know what that what Wayne did for her cuz she's like a female Wayne to me like she has nice nice flow bars uh, she animated but lyrically good um, punchlines um, I could tell definitely she was spitting more uh, on this album on Pink Friday than uh, going forward she kind of turned into a, um, an artist Did, she went uh, one thing a- I want to post I, I want to see if you feel the same way does it seem to you on the first album she was more well rounded and more conscious to like being a role model to women than uh, and like little girls than her next couple albums because like if you look at how often she speaks about sex in the first album it's is not very often at all right and i think that has to do with the, with the switch she went from a rapper to an artist now she's just entertaining you know what i'm saying when before she was just she was rapping you know what i'm saying she was giving you bars punchlines. but she's singing on here She's yeah. got pop songs yeah, on here be- because she's she's talented. <clears throat> she's talented enough to do both. You know what I'm saying, but if you notice going forward, it, the, like the 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 rapping kind of like slow down a little bit. Like she's not rapping as hard as she was rapping in this album, or as much. Well, I mean, if you really like break it down, like how many songs she actually raps on on this album, it's kind of in line with the actual other albums. I, I actually had to do that because I was just like, nah, but it's it's kind of in line. You know what I'm saying? Like she raps on song number one, number two, number three, number four. You can argue. Yeah, she she raps on right through she, me. She kind of even she kind of even raps on moment for life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, she sung on save me moment for life. She rap. Check it out. She's kind of doing like a pop thing. Right. I mean, you could consider that rapping blazing. She's singing and rapping. Here I am. She's. Well, singing and rapping dear old nick she's singing and rapping right your love she's singing you right. know last chance she's rapping because natasha bangerfield is singing super bass she's doing both you know what i'm saying so i, I see what you're saying i think i think this might be a album, little harder i think the second album roman reloaded was a blatant attempt to go fully commercial Pop, because right. super bass success and she was just like yo I can, I can do this. I can do that. Right. So she went and got Lady Gaga's producer, right, right. Red One, and made a disaster <laughs> of an album, if you ask me. Right. Um, but yeah, I gave this one um, a 96 classic for Nikki. So I'm grading her on her work. So this is Nikki's best work. It's a classic to me, a 96. <laughs> what you gave it? <laughs> uh, Ooh. Yeah, um, I'm going to have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say it's a, I don't think it's a classic. I, I will say like, and I was struggling with, this was the hardest review I had for the week. In my opinion, everything else was pretty simple. You know, Tish, TLC, this album is very good. It really is. You know what I'm saying? Roman's Revenge I don't know if she really kept up with him her, some of her bar she started she came out like an animal and some of the bars started getting weak who really keeps up with him 
Royce to five nine. That, that, I mean, yeah. Slaughterhouse can. That's about uh, it. I mean, really. uh, there's not much people, right? But I mean, but when you like look at her like on Monster, like yeah. Jay and, and Kanye didn't really even hang with her. Like right. she took that, she took the ball and ran with it, and she went home with the ball. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But all right, all right, look, check it out, man. I, I think she made a very big progression. Playtime is over was you know one of her first was her first mixtape. You look at her progression from then and then to now, like from then to Pink Friday, she went from being more like a rapper like Kim, like focused on being an MC MC right. to being more diverse. Right. You know, she she credits Lil Wayne for that. She said Wayne told her to be herself, take some of that drama and acting right. that she learned and implement it into her style. Yeah, you hear has, it on she, this album. She has multiple characters and that goes back to her schooling and her arts and her, you know, her acting and all that. Yeah. You know, and uh, I think that, you know, this album shows a lot of sides of Nicki. You look at songs like Roman's Revenge, and then you look at a song like a, like Fly. Two completely different arenas, and you get like Did It On Them and then Save Me. Right. That, like that, she's showing a lot of range. That's why um, I'm not gonna, I'm not di- di- discrediting her at all. Her grade is her grade. She got an A, 96 classic. But I'm grading her to her. It's not. No, nah, no, nah, I, yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's not like this joint is that fire, but it's her best work. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but I still don't. I don't think she has a classic album, though. Agree. That that that's all well, I'm saying. I, could, so, I can't understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, don't get me wrong. I get rid of '93. Okay. It's like I'm. I'm not saying it's, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not far yeah, yeah, off. Yeah. It's just not a classic. Yeah, yeah. It's gotcha. not far off. Gotcha. I just don't. I just don't think Nicki actually has a classic. Right. You know, it's like I said. She seemed to. She seemed to care more and, and be more conscious about what she spoke about. She really opened herself up a lot in this album. The second album, not so much. The third album just seemed like a breakup album. You know, well, unless you, if you're counting the third album as the pink print, you know, that's technically the fourth right. album. But anyway, you know, uh, on songs like Save Me and Your Love and Here I Am, you know, she's very vulnerable. You know, I, re- I really like that about it. But then on songs like I'm the Best, Moment for Life, Blazing, Dear Old Nick, you know, or or even Last Chance. She's really sharp. She's got her bars up. She's got a delivery on point. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people didn't like the pop songs, like Check It Out, Last Chance, the Super Bass, but I love all of them songs. Like, they're arguably some of my favorite songs she on the She did a great job on them. Yeah. It's I, not like she tried something and it was like, eh. Yeah, definitely. And, uh... So yeah, like I said, the thing that holds this album back for me in a classic, I think a couple of hooks are bad. Um, and I think there's too many songs on the album. I think that hurt the album. I just noticed it, Wayne wasn't on the album. He was in jail was when in this jail. came out. Right. You know, like, because he barely made Drake album. But, you know, right. he, they did that one joint before he went into jail. Just tell me yeah, what's really right. going on. No. I can't even remember what it's called right now. Right. And uh, But yeah, like I said, man, a lot of the songs on this album are amazing. Uh, a lot of classic songs on this album she broke history with like the the number one female with how many songs she actually had on the charts i usually don't base yeah the charts as a reason to like somebody but those songs in my opinion are rightfully earned for those you know yeah for I those mean, stats she had the radio like, most of her albums on the radio yeah yeah so. yeah definitely and uh like i said i gave it a 93 a amazing this is a great album i'm pretty sure most people have heard it you know if you disagree with us or agree with us yet you know let us know right we, we want to hear what y'all got to say if y'all don't y'all think neither one of us know what the hell we talking about we you still want to hear what you got to say absolutely all right hardcore little kim kimberly denise jones she was born and raised in brooklyn new york and bedford stuyvesant the livest one warm. represent bk to, to the, the fullest, fullest. But yo, yeah, yeah, as a child, you know, she attended the Queens of All Saints Elementary School. Like, it's basically like a Christian school. Uh, at nine years old, her parents separated and she was raised by her father. And her and her father didn't really have the greatest relationship. You know, uh, she actually got kicked out of the house. And uh, once she got kicked out of the house, she decided she wanted to drop out of school when she was about 16. Uh, Kim met Biggie as she was a teen. And uh, he would actually take her under his wing and make her basically like the lone member of his junior mafia. And uh, if y'all don't know what mafia stands for in junior mafia, it stands for masters and finding intelligent attitudes. You know, her relationship with Biggie also was more intimate, you know, than anything. Right. And it also helped her launch her, you know, career after junior mafia. You know, I don't even think they broke up immediately, but. You know, after Junior Mafia's album came out, Kim was the next one out, and her relationship right. with Big had a lot to do with that. 
Hardcore's Little Kim's debut album, man. How you feel about Hardcore? Um, I, I believe she did an amazing job um, delivering and covering Biggie's flows and bars, and um, she made it real believable. Like we spoke earlier this week, like um, like we know this is Biggie's flow and Biggie's delivery, but it, she made it sound so believable where you you didn't really think about it. You just enjoyed the music. Um, the context of the music was so raw. I have it in quotations, hardcore. Like it was raw, bro. Like the production was dope. Features, uh, features held it down. Um, storytelling, uh, party vibe. Um, it had a little bit of a uh, little bit of everything. I want to say um, big mama things. No Time, Crushing You, which was uh, the singles and stuff like that. They definitely, uh, you know, they definitely was fire. Um, the, the production was so mellow on, on that drugs track. Like, that might be my favorite song on the album. I think French or Fab redid that. I'm it not was sure. Fab. Okay. Yeah, but uh, that might be my favorite song on the album. Um, I, oh, yeah. The other, my other favorite song on the album was uh, I Like How They Flip Dream. You know uh, how you know dreams are fucking R and B. You know what I'm saying? How they flipped that? So that was dope. I gave this an A, a classic '96. Also, um, I don't have much bad to say about it. Hey, I, I gave it a '97, an A. I think it's a classic album. Uh, when this album came out, man, you had to hide the album from your parents, man, because your parents was not trying to hear it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was it's so it was so raw and like nasty, like, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. And then and then you know, especially when you get to the, you talking about the album cover, then, right? Album cover, then in the if, if you ain't seen the album cover, the Lil Kim Hardcore, just Google the album cover, the Lil Kim's Hardcore. Like everybody wanted to have that as they wall poster, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I, uh, another cool thing I learned about this is actually the album was originally titled Queen B. Okay. You know, uh, but uh, besides that, you know, when this album came out, there was really nothing like it. There was no female artists being like this sexual in their music. So this was like new, you know, hardcore is very raw. Right. You know, very it's, it's sexual, hardcore. very raw. It's like, it's like a porn or a, a audio porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, pretty much. Right. You know, uh, there's so many classic songs on this album, man, from like Big Mama Thing, for like any any girl that you meet. That's probably 26 and over knows how Big Mama thing starts off. Right. They know those right. first four bars. Straight. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Yeah, definitely. They all know those first four bars. No time with Puffy, crazy, spin a little dough, you know, crush on you, even though this is the version without Lil' Kim. I actually learned why she wasn't on the song. Apparently she got pregnant and didn't know what she wanted to do. So she basically just abandoned the album crazy and and biggie was like fuck it we're gonna finish it without it and had little c's do the song by herself okay. and and so basically uh that's why you get the version with only him right and when they decided to turn in a video they had to do a remix right and the video for that you know with all the different colors and stuff yeah like she basically brought out she's basically the originator of all these color wigs and stuff like right. that and uh that's the whole probably, concept probably, was from the Wiz. right that's probably how the little beef because you know it was like yeah, like yeah. little comparisons with Nikki and Kim. With I don't think Nikki and Kim are really as closely related as a lot of people think they are. You well, know? musically, not, not at yeah. all. It, it was just that picture. It was just the picture and she the posed, wigs, right? Picture uh, the wigs and the sex. The they sexual don't sound talk. alike. Nah, not at all. You know, n nothing. Right. You know, you can make all the little arguments you want, but it's it's a very small base. Right. You know, and then not only that, she always used to talk about how much she loved Kim and all of that, but. Let's not really get into all that whack right. shit. You know, uh, drugs, like you said, Fab's version is crazy too, but this beat is crazy. Queen bitch is crazy. Uh, Dreams, I, I, I kind of knocked this song a little bit just because it's basically really just a copy of Biggie's album version. Right. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not really a huge fan of, of Mafia Land. It's a dope song. You know, uh, We Don't Need It, That's My Joint, Not Tonight with Jermaine Dupri, That's My Joint. Right. The remix to Not Tonight basically ladies night it's my joint you know and and uh 
the song that i do not like on this album is fuck you the last song on the album that's one of the only songs biggie helped with the production biggie is credited as a writer on every song on this album except for not tonight <laughs> every single song on this album but not tonight because jermaine dupree was all over it yeah and and for you for you young bucks that you know like i like to throw this out there to think stevie j and them but a reality star he did no time you know he produced no time right. on this album i just want to throw that out there uh i gave it like i said i gave it a 97 a i think the album is classic i i had to knock it because of that that one song fuck you on the album at the end and dreams but it doesn't i, I can't knock it out too much because this album is ridiculous yo and the other thing i don't really like is how the whole album is only about drugs sex and money that's it it's, no no content at all at least when you listen to to like ready to die biggie tells you about itself like from this album all you learn is like kim like sex and money right you know you there's really nothing else you walk <laughs> away you don't really learn about kim until you didn't learn about kim right and her music until after biggie died right but well that kind of was the marketing scheme i guess like i'm just gonna write or help you with these bars where you sound so raw nasty and different where no female could even try to challenge you because I, I'm helping you with the bars, so you coming out so raw, like this could damn near be counted as a Biggie album. Yeah, you can you can argue that. All right, and I'm saying like it's a setup, like how even the song setups. You know what I'm saying now, like who can argue with that? <laughs> like man, but yeah, like like we said, it's still a classic album though. We not gonna take no uh, no credit from it. Um, talent is talent. She delivered. Yeah, she, yeah you know if, if she didn't write it, she recited it well. That, right. That's what Puffy would say. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, TLC, Crazy Sexy Cool. No, it does not stand for 10 Love and Care. TLC is a group that consists of T-Boz, Left Eye, and Chili. Real names, T-Boz's real name is Tiana, Tanise Watkins. Left Eye's real name is Lisa Nicole Lopez, and Chili's real name is Rosanna Ocean Thomas. Right. You know, they actually were a group formed in Atlanta, Georgia. T Boz was actually born in Des Moines, Iowa, but she moved to Atlanta when she was nine. Lisa uh, Left Eye was uh, born in Philly, and she moved to Atlanta to audition for TLC. And Chili, she was born and raised in Atlanta. A producer named Ian Burke and Crystal Jones, an uh, artist, she came up with it. The, they both came up with the idea of a girl group that was like Belle Bib DeVoe. And uh, they did auditions, you know. The right. group started out as Crystal, t Boz, and Left Eye, and their group name was Second Nature. And, uh, you know, they joined Jermaine Dupri and Rico Love to work on a demo. You know, Rico uh, Rico Wade, excuse me, Rico Wade from Organized Noise. Right. And then a friend of t Boz, she worked at, t Boz worked at a hair salon. A friend of hers introduced her in uh, Perry Pebbles Reed, who was at the time L.A. Reed's wife. Right. And uh, she started managing them. And uh, she changed her name to TLC Ski, and it basically was an acronym for all of their names, you know, Tiana, Lisa, and Crystal. And uh, she also arranged an audition for uh, for LaFace Records for Babyface and L.A. Reid. Like I said, she was married to him. And uh, L.A. Reid felt that Crystal should be replaced in the group. That's crazy. Even though, you know, she came up with the idea for the group. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy yeah but uh uh basically uh you know they uh made their first appearance um just t um t boz and left eye on um a label mate named damien dames he had an album it was his album's name was damien dames and uh pebbles discovered chili is one of his backup dancers and uh they actually signed chili to the group and the name was just changed strictly to tlc and they gave you know her the nickname chili so they can keep the name uh they signed a deal with LaFace records and uh they uh did a background actually before they signed with LaFace, they did a background um they sung background on a song for jermaine jackson rebel with the cause crazy you know and uh they started working on their first album and uh they were working with la reed babyface dallas austin jermaine dupri organized noise puffy and marley mall uh, marley mall and our Crazy Sexy Cool is actually their second album. How do you feel about TLC's Crazy Sexy Cool? Well, offhand, I'm going to say this was the easiest week because we reviewed a whole bunch of good artists. So it was an, it was easy on the ears. Um, 
this is another A, another classic. Um, like you spoke on, JD, Diddy, and Dallas Austin put together a beautiful uh, boom bap 90s R&B hip hop album. Now who can argue with that? Right, right. And um, they, they touched a lot of different subjects from love, sex, drugs. You know, you could uh, definitely hear the emotions and the lyrics and in the, in the, in, in the vocals. Um, Red Light Special, man, that's that that joint go hard. Word. That I, I, joint was on me. I was walking by the hallway and I just started singing it today at work and I seen somebody turn and just look at me and I was like, damn, I, I was really into it <laughs> when I was listening to this joint. I'm at work singing this joint. But yeah, um, you know. That's that baby face, man. Right, right, right. Creep was dope. Uh, you know, if I was your girlfriend was dope. You know. Uh, I don't really like it better than the Prince verse, version though, but I mean that, that's. I mean, who, like I mean, you when said, you're redoing Prince, it's kind of hard to outdo Prince, right? Like you said, who can argue that? You know what I'm saying, like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I, what you want me to say? It's not better than the Prince joint, but it's still oh, fire. <laughs> yeah, so you know, I gave this a uh, A classic. Also, what, what you thought of it? Just A. Hey, what's what's the number? I, I was I was undecided. <laughs> I was undecided. I'm not gonna lie, I was undecided. I gave it a 97. Okay. Uh, I I deducted a couple points because of the if I was your boyfriend or girlfriend joint. Okay. Uh, it's not a bad song. It's just it's not better than Prince, and I still like the song. So shout out to Fife Dog on the intro. Yeah, Fife Dog was on the intro. Word. Yo, I used to play this album every day when I was a kid. Like if you <laughs> spoke to my dad, he used to get mad because I would be in the shower from one all the way to waterfalls once that interlude came on i knew it was time for me to get out the shower like long 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 showers yo i used to love that album singing Crazy. singing the album in the shower and everything yo Crazy. but uh you know tlc even though they were a group that wasn't like form like themselves Originally. they still always click their music right. always sound really good you know babyface is he was the best songwriter from the 80s to the early 90s before r kelly took over right Babyface was amazing. Anything you listen to with Babyface, he always found a way to bring like the best out of the artist. Right. Like you know, even when you listen to like Todd Dolla Sign song with Babyface, like he brought the, he brought he he, right. he know how to bring it out of people, man. I love Fife Dog on the intro, like we said. You know, the only real guest on this album is Fife Dog and Andre Three Thousand. Everybody else is just talking. Busta, uh, Jermaine Dupri, uh, Puffy, like they don't really do anything but talk. All right. You know. Right. Uh, you know, uh, I love the song with Andre 3000, Something Wicked, they, uh, This Way Comes. And they talking about, like, you know, basically people killing each other over brands and stuff like right. that. Stuff that's still going on today. In 94, they talking this stuff, man. Yeah. I, I love the the range of content. Like you said, they talk about relationships, love, friendships with fake friends. They talk about AIDS. They talk about, you know, the bad uh, concepts of drug dealing, gang violence. Right. You know, wide range of topics. Right. For an R&B group to be coming up with all of that stuff. I will say that when you look at the credits for who wrote on the songs, you don't really see their names much except for on the interludes. The only person's name you see is uh, Left Eye for the raps. Right. You know what I'm saying? You see everybody else's name for the writing. Uh this man yo tlc when they came out like they were like three of the sexiest women on the planet this was back when big booties was not that big of a deal don't give me sir mix a lot i, I you know yeah, baby I mean, got back was out but back not, then but it, it, it it's not how it is now. now i mean it's still it still ain't really that big of a deal like you know people may act like it's as big a, a bigger deal than it really is I, I think it got oversaturated and now people are starting to yeah, Instagram. With Instagram, got it to the point where it's corny now. Man, it's to the point when I see somebody's ass is. So you gotta big. wonder if it's real or no, fake. Now. Yeah, oh yeah, that's off the bat. We had that conversation already. Where nowadays you can't even tell. Sometimes you, back then it wasn't right, even a question. Right, but man, it's like when you, once you see they die and butt ratio is all out of whack. It's like how could he even? That's why I'm kind of turned off with like. Came a show a little bit because that thing is like yeah that joint look too fake it looks too fake huge but bro. yeah like this is back when you could be a, a little slim thing and everybody be walking down the street yeah. like right right <laughs> so you seen Aaliyah had it yeah like Aaliyah, that too? yeah uh, all of them did right. like a lot of them singers man you ain't have to have nobody to be like that Monica yeah yeah right. Monica Brandy right. like right. yeah like right. 
no, no crazy bodies, anything like that. No but, exposing yourself and nah, none of that. Nah, I mean, but they they kept it sexy and tomboyish. Oh yeah, definitely. They, they TLC was definitely classy with theirs. Like left eye had the condom over Wearing the eye, the condoms and like stuff, you know, as earrings and as over the glasses and whatnot. Yeah, they were always trying to send a message. Right. Always very positive, man. I ain't, I ain't got nothing negative to say about TLC. I love TLC. Shout out to Organized Noise on that waterfalls because that uh, that song is straight classic. And another Word. thing, shout out to Deborah Killens, man. A lot of people don't know who she is. She's considered basically like the fourth member of TLC. She sings background on pretty much every song on the album, on pretty much all her albums, on all TLC's albums. She also she also wrote uh, "Take Our Time," the song on the album. And also, if you watch Idlewild with when Paula Patton singing, that's really Deborah Killens singing. You wow. know what I'm saying? So shout out to her. Word. 97 classic Mingo was undecided on a number you just gave it a classic grade. Word. <laughs> the miseducation of Lauren Hill. Her Man. real name is Lauren Hill, you know. She was born in East Orange, New Jersey. Man. Her family uh lived in New York City as well and then New York before they actually settled in South Orange, New Jersey. Her favorite artists as a kid were uh were Curtis Mayfield, Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, Gladys Knight and Marvin Gaye. You know, her mom played the piano and her dad actually would uh, sing at nightclubs and weddings. Dope. You know, she appeared on Showtime at DePaulo as a kid. You know, apparently she didn't do too well, but she held her composure on stage and cried backstage. Uh, I don't know what happened. I, you know, I haven't seen it. Uh, you know, she sang Who's Loving You by Smokey Robinson. And then um, in high school in Columbia High, she uh, was on the track team. She uh, was a cheerleader. She was on a dance team. She took violin lessons. She also founded the gospel choir in the school and also took acting classes. You know, she took all advancement placement classes in school. She, she felt like she just needed to do tackle everything right. and took everything as a challenge. You know, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, while she was in a, a freshman in school, she met Prize and, you know, Prize wanted her to join a group. Eventually, why Clef would join, you know, you want to learn about the Fugees, you can listen to our Fuji review. Uh, she started out singing. But then she learned how to rap, and she, uh, when she was with them, right. she actually modeled her rap style behind Ice Cube. Like she was just like, I, I like Ice Cube, I want to rap like Ice Cube. So she modeled her rapping ability. I want to say Cube. we had a conversation about this, but I forgot. I heard someone speak on this, like how Cube was dope as hell, and at one time, not a lot of rappers ain't wanted with Cube. Nah, yeah, but it, it, but then they like, how can he fall off so quick? Like he, you know, like he just stopped rapping. I forgot where was this conversation. Yeah, that that conversation is for another time. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, but we, I was, we can I, do that when we get to a cube. We, we might need to do a cube joint too. We need to. Yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah, she uh, she started out singing uh, and uh, she rapped like she, I said. She you know model style after Ice Cube. She started doing uh off Broadway. She did a thing called the Twelfth Night. And uh, she also started getting into TV. She was on As the World Turns. And then, of course, she got the lead role in Sister Act 2. Everybody know her killing, right. you know, the songs <laughs> in, in, in that joint. Right. Along with Homeboy from, uh, not City High, City High. When he killed Oh Happy Day. Oh, yeah, I forgot I forgot his name. I can't remember his name yeah. right now either. You know, uh, her and Wyclef also had a relationship after the Fuji thing, you know, uh, actually, during the Fuji's thing, her and Wycliffe, you know, got into a relationship. I believe they have a kid together. I'm not 100 percent sure. Don't quote me on that. You know, and uh, after the thing, Wycliffe didn't work out. You know, she decided to go a solo route and work on a solo album. And uh, the Miseducation of Lauren Hill is actually her debut album. Um, she really didn't drop another album after this. How you feel about the Miseducation of Lauren Hill? I, I, man, it's like, it's like. Like what you just said is like that that was a gift and a curse. Her dropping the album and never dropping nothing again is a gift and a curse because this album is to me flawless, hands Excellent. down. Excellent. Right. Honey, classic. Like f the production was so hard from the beginning of the album. Like from the from the first track, doing was had you. Then she killed it, uh, you know, she no no bullshit content. You know, it's motivational music, righteous music, knowledge. Yo, the album don't even got a parental advisory sticker, dog. I never even thought about that, bro. <laughs> it's no <laughs> bullshit content. It's all righteous thinker, relationship, righteous music. Like, strong women wake up. Like, 
the entire album could play. You know what I'm saying? And I love Zion. Oh, uh, righty then. Uh, you know what I'm saying Zion was so fire to me yeah I mean if you got a kid you're gonna be feeling that song right. like cause I love the fact that she's just talking about how they wanted her to basically get rid of her baby like they're like yo you, your career is just taking off you can't have a kid now Wait, and now mean? she's talking about how she found the joy of her life in her son yeah and ain't got nothing to do with the music and, and then do up and I'm saying that thing she's telling y'all like you know what I'm saying she's giving it to y'all raw she's like, telling you the game right she was kicking yeah she was kicking so much female game bruh so much right, female she, game yeah you right. know she even talked to the dudes remember right yeah. Yeah, right <laughs> she gave it to All both sides Sarah with his rims and his Tims yeah. and his women yeah. right yeah, but, that's, that's but yeah but I, I think this was uh, flawless to me man Um, it's almost to say yeah I'm glad she didn't drop nothing else because it's like I don't know she came in with a classic album she left with a classic album right you know, because after this, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, I think she had like, like, uh, she did unplugged and they said she had like a couple things where she had breakdowns on stage and people get mad because she shows up late to concerts and stuff. She was talking about how she got to get her energy right or she can't go out there and perform to her fullest ability. So, I mean, it sounds like a weird uh, excuse. I understand it. Right. I'm not saying that, you know, it works, but, you know, but, yo, this album is ridiculous. I love the album. It's called The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill. The album is basically a school desk with her picture drawn on it. And all the skits in between the songs are basically like them talking about topics that are basically miseducated about. Right. Like love. Right. It, mainly <laughs> love. Because like that is one of the most misunderstood things on this planet. Especially with a lot of, a lot of, of the younger guys being influenced by hip hop music, acting like it's not cool to be in love and stuff like that. Right. Like all them dudes got girls. Right. A lot of them dudes is married. <laughs> right. They, they, they want you to be miserable. <laughs> they want you to think that that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They want you to be miserable. That's you crazy. said you watching the videos. You think they really hitting right. off a hundred girls. Some of the younger guys probably. But this whole time Snoop been rapping, he been married. Right. You know, this whole time Q been ra- rapping, he been married. This whole time DMX been rapping. He was married. Like, don't let a lot of these guys fool right. you. They what what Jay Z said. They look at Jay. They yeah. look at Jay. That line. I, that what he said. What was it again? It, I'll be something. forever macking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Where yeah, you at now? Said, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, then I, I went blank on that. But yeah, it was something. He said, something. "Get me, give my heart to a woman. Not, yeah, not for nothing. Yeah, that would yeah, never I'll, I'll be forever mac. Yeah, yeah, I'll be forever, I'll be forever mac. mac. Yeah, yeah. And now he's married. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, Yo, it's it's a natural cycle. I love how they they tackle it a lot in all the skits. They got little kids telling you what they think a lot dope. Uh, Lost one and uh, X Factor. She's basically like going at Y Club's neck. Well, actually, Lost one. She's going at his neck and X Factor's more so her trying to figure out why I can't work out. You know, uh, Doop. Like you said, she's giving you content. Superstar. She's talking about how people get famous and start talking about that BS final hour she's just straight spitting yo this content everywhere on this album right, right you know this album has singing rapping she produced every song on the album that's crazy <laughs> you know what i'm saying and the funny thing is uh i remember when i was getting the uh, research ready for the fujis right they said she wanted to re- produce on the fujis album why cliff kept telling her no just stay in your lane just sing right here she produced everything and look what we got you know it's crazy and, and this album also has traces of neo so and reggae on this joint right you know right. i love i love her version of can't take my eyes off you i love miseducation everything is everything you know what i'm saying yep. father uh father them father like every song on this album it's only a few features carlos santana mary j blige and d'angelo but all of them are perfect where, where you said she was from again she's from um new jersey east orange new jersey but like uh, did we did we we didn't get that deep into her do we know uh where her parents is from or was she uh because i want to i want to say she's some i, I want to they're they're from out of this country they're not from america if i'm not mistaken uh but i want to say uh, they got to be from an island somewhere because she gave me that whole island vibe like yeah i mean I, I, well it doesn't really say what they were Nah, it doesn't really say what they were. It just tells what they do, what they did. Okay. So I'm but, not really sure. But she definitely gives me that island vibe, that righteousness, and I'm saying somewhat like 
Something like Bob Marley, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean she probably she possibly grew up listening to that. You know what I'm saying? Right. But yeah, it's it's just something soulful about Lauren Hill. And uh if you're young and you ain't heard it, you gotta hear it. If you if you older than 27 you probably already heard this yeah, album shout out to my cousin Catherine because i didn't even have this album she purchased this album and crazy bro um i remember we used to like take turns listening to i guess the albums we bought whenever we would come around each other i remember she bought uh it was written also but yeah. she had that she had the tape to that but um yeah so i remember her coming bringing that over and i was like Ah, shit can you bring that over next week again like, I, I asked it during the week like you can when you come back on sunday bring it back again like but yeah it was definitely a dope album yeah this this album is definitely one of the best female rapper albums i mean and she's not just rapping but this is one of the best female rapping albums period right all right man that has been episode 26 of the report card yup yeah man and uh i really hope you guys really check out these artists this week man like that tish Hyman joint is crazy if you are young and you ain't heard tlc definitely check it out crazy sexy <laughs> cool or or miseducation of lauren hill like you owe it to yourself to hear that right you know what i'm saying and uh y'all check out the playlist this week man it's gonna be lit man i'm gonna put oh, some yeah. missy in there i'm gonna put some the brad in there like right it's all it's gonna be strictly female rappers right we couldn't get them all in because we do only four or five you know we yeah get, man but yeah. There's a i love lot rod more. digger right. i love i love missy, missy. i love the brat i love queen latif i right. love salt and pepper i love right. mc light like I, I love a lot of these female rappers right. man and uh you know, not a mill, but it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, crazy. Yeah, not a mill, man. <laughs> you played yourself. Right. But uh, anyway, yeah, you know, follow us on, yo, hit us up on on Facebook. You know, the Report Card Podcast, SoundCloud, the Report Card Podcast, Tumblr, the Report Card Podcast, uh, social uh, Twitter is at the Report Card Pod. Uh, no, TRC Podcast Live and on instagram is at trc podcast uh you can subscribe to us on itunes google music play our heart radio yep tune in all stitcher over. libsyn yep soundcloud keep going. youtube keep going I, I can't remember the rest keep going <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't remember the rest of them man i can't remember the rest of play yourself <laughs> word but yeah now nah, it's very important for you guys man to show we already know y'all showing us love because we see the yo stats. man shout out to the people in china man we got like 35 bodies in china man yo you know what i'm saying we international people in china people in spain it's like 33 right. people in spain too Ooh, it's shout just out to like my boy illich man he started that wave <laughs> over there yo it's just like yo it's crazy like saudi arabia right. like i don't even know nobody right. in saudi but, arabia but dog. we need y'all to comment and rate us please just comment and rate you know, so we could ha have an idea where we where we going with the next episode or what we doing. You know, which ones we like or which ones was more liked or dislike. Not just that, y'all could get us featured in the iTunes store and all of that too. Oh yeah, man! And all y'all gotta what? do is comment and rate, man. Just comment and rate. That's once, all you gotta do. Once we start to get, you know, to get out there, we all start to eat. Yeah, so. definitely. Word. Yeah, definitely man. Get, uh, get out there, subscribe, tell a friend, to tell a friend, uh, comment, and you know. Feel free to uh, email us too. Requests, uh, complaints, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Like I told you a million times, I love to debate hip hop, man. <laughs> Mingo could tell you, man. I, yeah, we we yeah. Was, we was <laughs> We're going back and forth, back and about forth the for like an hour. And yeah, and ain't no hostile argument. It's just debate. Right, it's right, just debate, right, man. Right, and that's know? that's why I, uh, I could I can I could relate to my brother right here because we we go hard and there's no hard feelings. It's just a debate. It's yeah. just. Yeah, man. Your facts or your energy and my energy, and that's it. If yeah, you can test your knowledge to me, man. I do this music shit, man. Right. I I know that I live this shit. Now you gonna beat me with this little young thug and little <laughs> yachty shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gonna beat me and try and me knowledge with something other than that. But if you really gonna try to give me on anything other than that, play yourself. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I could vouch for that. And man. then, after, and then that. after we debate, congratulations, you, know, you played right. yourself. <laughs> right. Oh, I, I can vouch for that. The man definitely does his homework. You know what I'm saying? We we all hip hop heavy, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, man. Check us out, man. We ain't steering you wrong. Yeah, man, hit that us up, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, and another thing, man. Football season's coming, man. Oh yeah. That Seriously. Way. Yeah. And uh 
But I ain't got nothing else, man. On that note. Yeah, man. We just looking forward to that, man. Every Sunday being on that couch. Having a reason not to move off the with, couch for with the that whole fire day. stick. Oh yeah, <laughs> crazy. Hey, yeah, hey, hey, act like I ain't hear that. Yeah. On that note, <laughs> peace. peace.